The office was empty and I picked up the phone and I was leaving for vacation the next day. And this young lady wanted to have an abortion. And she had every reason in the world to believe that was her only choice. She went through her whole story. And before I hung up, I said, do you believe God has a plan for this child? And she said, yes. When she hung up, she said, I'm still going to do this. And I said, I'm leaving for vacation. Here's my cell phone number if you need to talk to anybody. Six weeks later, she called me, told me her name, and said, do you remember me? And I rattled off the, the story, and she said, you do remember me. She said, I'm going to carry this baby. Somebody the other day said, uh, it's just a sperm and an egg, until she saw it on the screen. And she said, it's not just a sperm and an egg. This is a baby. The Pregnancy Help Center exists to share the love of Christ with women experiencing an unplanned pregnancy and empowering them to choose life instead of abortion. We want our message to be out there that we're pro-life. We're encouraging women to choose life. We can't force anybody to choose life. All choice is theirs. We're just here to love them and help them understand what their options are, parenting, adoption, or abortion, and explaining all of those to them. Uh, started out in a one room in a house with the volunteer director and all the baby clothes in her office. That first year we ministered to 37 clients in 1987 and now it's between, depending on the year, anywhere between 2,500 and 3,500 a year. The advocate sees them, uh, takes them to do a pregnancy test, then takes them back and starts um, talking to them, take, doing a little intake, kind of getting a feel for what their situation is. And I came to take a test because um, uh, I just was, I don't know, not myself. And uh, I took a pregnancy test over the counter and it was positive. So we came, you know, here and or whatever and just to make sure it was accurate and to see what our options were. He just was focused on his iPhone, playing the game, and then they told us. We both cried in the car at McDonald's and then went to school. The, these two young kids especially needed just a lot of encouragement. Uh, they knew they wanted to parent the baby, but they certainly had tremendous obstacles. Sharon is wonderful. She is the best. Every time I come here, she greets us with this big smile. And it's just like, you know, I just love talking to her. We try to get in as much and tell her our story, what's going on, and we like to keep her updated about us because she's, she's just wonderful. She tells us her stories that makes us feel better and makes us do positive things and I mean honestly she keeps us working hard in our relationship. They are involved in whatever we have to offer. They call us on a regular basis. They use our store. Everything I asked, all the questions I had, I pretty much got them answered. If they couldn't answer them, they gave me sources. Very impressed with DJ as a young teen wanting to be the man and step up and take care and provide, protect. We, me and DJ came together throughout the pregnancy to watch videos and it was, it was just great. We've just been here ever since. It, it helps out a lot. What I love, and this is the part of my job I love, is these girls will limp in. Once they've spoken to an advocate, been greeted at the door, they leap out. I'm currently a YSU student for a nurse studying nursing. Her dad has, this is his last year at Boardman. He graduates this year and um, he's going to go for firefighter classes and then he wants to go to YSU for business. I had a great life. I had everything you can think of and I want the same for her and I want to do whatever I can to make it so that she can enjoy her teenage life. So I want to get her through college and I want her to be a teenager not a teen mom. I had no direction. I didn't know where to turn at all and I was scared, I was confused, I was anything in the book. <laughs> as soon as I went to the Pregnancy Help Center, I just, they just provided me with such direction. They're in a crisis situation, and we, we understand that. We know what they're going through is crises. So we, mainly the thing when they come in, they honestly really just need somebody to listen because they're getting, they're getting advice, but it isn't the advice 
that's the best for them. Most of the time, I'm listening to these girls, and they're telling me what everybody else thinks they want them to do for themselves. You know, what's best for her? That's what matters. What is best for you as a woman? I decided to do adoption. As soon as I did the adoption, I struggled completely. And I had a really hard time, and I mean, it wasn't an easy decision for me to make at all. I came multiple times throughout my pregnancy. They were able to direct me where, how to cope with adoption, how to prepare me for adoption. To, they even provided videos where I could watch. They, it, it was just so much in one where I was just overwhelmed with how much support I had from everyone here. Knowledge is power, okay? They're gonna have all the information and all the knowledge that they're going to need to make this life-changing decision. It's an open adoption, and I talk to them at least once a week, normally. I ex she exchanges pictures with me all the time. She, she tells me all the time that Jordan doesn't have one mother, she has two and that she has two families, and that she thanks God every day for me and for Jordan and her life. And I just, I just couldn't ask for a better situation for her. The one thing that I told myself is, I'm not gonna do this unless I completely find the perfect parents. It had, everything had to work out in line or else I wasn't gonna go through this. And to be honest, I found beyond what I expected with my adoptive parents for my daughter. I would love to be able to go into an adoption network and be able to be an adoption counselor because me personally, I think that would be just a perfect person to go to, someone that has been through everything that you're gonna be about to go through. I would have never realized my true calling in life if it wasn't for what everything I've been through. And God allows stuff for, to happen in your life to be able to overcome and see the good out of it too. When a woman who's been ministered to makes the decision to go ahead and abort her child, we weep for her um, because we know the loss that she has suffered and how that's going to affect her over the course of her lifetime. I was so young and I think I just did what I was told, you know, I just, I was young and that's what they said to do and I did it. My mother drove me to the abortion. I can still remember driving there and being so afraid. My boyfriend set it up, I don't even, and I think he's the one that set it up, I'm not even positive of that. It was just like I went to him, he said that's what we were going to do, and the next thing I knew I had an appointment at a doctor's office right here, right here in Boardman, and um, I went in and they did the abortion. Fifteen minutes done, it was over, and my life has changed forever. After um, you go through the Bible study and um, you deal with all the issues, they they talk to you about things like, well, what did you think the baby was? And I knew always in my heart that it was a boy. I just knew it. They asked you to do something to. Uh, memorialize the baby something to as a tribute. I painted a picture of the baby. I did a painting because I paint and um, it was freeing. I always wanted children that make you know it might sound really strange because I had the abortion but I just sort of did what I was told and after it all I wanted to do was have a family. I actually you know met my husband and we got married and I got pregnant and I have four children. I have four adult children who are just wonderful. And um, I wish I had my other baby. I wish I had my other baby now. I have, I have eight grandchildren. I've been blessed. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how blessed I am. For God to do all that for me, and then for me all these years to think he didn't forgive me, but, you know, he did. And I just didn't forgive myself. With God, anything is forgivable. And um, he really healed my heart. And he set me free of it and uh, now I can talk. I can talk to anybody about it. I talk to people at my desk at work. I've talked in schools and um, I've met probably in the last six months ten women who have had abortions, who have lived with it probably as long as I have. God has allowed me to 
be there for them, to talk to them, and to encourage them to get better because hiding it and bearing it just doesn't do anything. And the Crisis Pregnancy Center was pivotal in my recovery. It was the last step. So many men are now coming through our doors and they need to understand what it is, uh, their responsibility, what their responsibility is as far as being a father. You know, we'll sit down and just talk to them about, you know, what's, what's going to transpire over the next nine months and, you know, talk about their roles as, as a father. Uh, let them know that, uh, you know, this task that they're about to take on is, is not easy, but it's, it's really enjoyable and, and it can be really rewarding. And we're going to be hopefully with, you know, some of these uh, individuals for eight, nine months. So just build a relationship and, you know, just help them out any way we can. We're early in the morning. I think we're like eight o'clock in the morning right now. I was barely half awake, and uh, and then the, the lady, the text to the ultrasound, says, "Oh, baby A's heartbeat, A. baby B." And, like I was about ready to fall over. And I just, at first, I was scared for a while, but eventually, throughout the pregnancy, it turned more into excitement. We, we came to the parenting class after the pregnancy um, to earn points. The points add up and you go down to the store and each thing kind of, there's a value to each type, type of item based on, you know, kind of its value in the real world. This is where the girls have earned these points, these baby dollars, to come down and shop. Okay, when they come in, we give them the opportunity to, to watch our videos, to come to our parenting classes to get the education, go to the places that they're, they're going to need. They earn these baby dollars and they're very excited about it because we don't just give it to them. It's like they have ownership. We like to make sure our kids have what they need. You know, I mean, it's easy to say, well, we know we're going to need diapers all month, but there's always that last something that you find that you need or, or they have a sudden growth spurt and all of a sudden don't fit their clothes and, you know, the car breaks down the same week and things like that. And it's almost like having a family. Um, uh, Everybody has always done their very best to help us. We obviously were a unique situation. We had the twins and we were high risk. We weren't sure they were going to even make it to the third trimester. So they always helped us and, and tried to adjust to what our needs were. Everyone here seemed to really care. And it was nice to kind of have a place to go to where people, you know, seemed to care about you and they really wanted to help you. And, um, you could, you know, get information if you needed it, you know, research or just, you know, insight in the parenting and you know, <laughs> kids and stuff like that. There's a lot of things to learn. So. There was also a spiritual element that kind of refilled my faith. My connection with God at the time was uh, shaky. My husband and I were having some issues after the loss of our first child. To have that spiritual support on top of it was very beneficial. It's like a second family that we didn't have they treated us as individuals. Everybody always cared about how we were doing that day. They wanted to know how the kids were doing. They wanted, they, they paid attention. All of our services are free. Every single thing is free. Depending on where your center is, how your community supports it, is how successful it is. We could not do this without volunteers and without donors. Our donors are our partners in this. And the volunteers, if we had to add 80 volunteers to the payroll, they do so much in this ministry from board membership, which is completely volunteer, to clerical work, to working in the store, to sorting clothes, um, men's ministry, all the male volunteers, the client advocates that if we actually paid each one of those to talk to these women, our budget would be astronomical. So the volunteers are our heart as far as we're concerned. Other centers that I've been in, half the size, a quarter of the size, Youngstown embraces what we do here and we're just, we're just thrilled. We take no government funding because we could not share Jesus in the center. Every, individuals like me, um, the people in the center. There is not anybody who's involved with this ministry that doesn't support this ministry financially. Several foundations uh, in town we apply for grants from and churches. We have about 50 churches in the area that support us in one way or the other, whether it's yearly, monthly financial giving. We have fundraisers. Every year we have a banquet 
and it's usually in November. And then we have an annual walk. Those are two ways. Of course, everything else is by donors. We have baby bottles that they, the people in the churches fill with, with coin and this raises about $22,000 a year, just putting your change into a baby bottle. The best part about working here is being able to show the life to these girls that have really have no idea what is really inside of them. I have, a, I have a friend that I work with and her daughter got pregnant and she was very upset that she was pregnant. And I just said to her, you know, she's choosing life. You know, she's choosing to have the baby. You know, do everything you can to help her. Do everything to support her so that she can have the baby. It is just a joy to be involved in a situation where you're actually helping girls and you get to see the result. I've been in your shoes. I know exactly what you're going through. It's not an easy road. And the biggest thing is that you have to look all completely in the aspect of your child. What's the best thing for your child? And look completely past yourself. I, mean, I work two jobs. I go to school Monday through Friday. It's really hard, but you know, the Pregnancy Help Center makes it, it, it makes it really kind of, it takes a little bit of a load off. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, when a child comes, there is no manual that comes with them, so it is, uh, you know, kind of, you learn on your own, unless you have somebody that's, that's willing to come alongside of you and, you know, uh, tell you a little bit about their life and, and their experience of, of raising kids. I can't imagine, you know, either one of them being gone, you know, they're, they're quite a pair and sometimes it's just fun to watch them interact with each other. They, they, they laugh, they smile, they, they just make each other laugh sometimes. I don't know what they're doing, but they just sit there and laugh and play with the other. I, you know, it's really neat. I would hope that anybody who walked out of here would take away, that they were loved when they were here.